Hello. Hello. Happy Thursday. <laughs> Got a blank canvas. <laughs> Welcome. How is everybody doing today? Hope everybody's doing well. My name is Megan from Painting with Megan. So happy to have you all here, whether you're watching live or on the replay, um, whether you are painting along with me or if you're just watching, it's all good. So welcome, welcome everybody. <laughs> I am in Listwell, Ontario. So I'm not sure if anybody's on here that's around me. Um, I know I have people on here from all over the world, which is so exciting that I can come on here and say hello and paint with you no matter where you are. <laughs> Hi, Heather. Okay, so today is a little bit of a different kind of live. Um, I call it a mystery live. So what I was planning on doing today is kind of being more spontaneous and getting to trust the process versus knowing uh, what we're going to be making exactly. So it's a little different. So as I paint, I'm just going to um, kind of let out what's in my mind and paint that with you here and tell you that as I go, of course, step by step. So you can follow along and paint with me. Oh yes, yeah, so this will be on replay, of course. No problem. So let me know if um, the music in the background is too low. Let's kind of turn it down a bit maybe. And then, yeah, let me know if you can see and hear me. Awesome. <laughs> From Nevada. Oh, cool. Ohio, newbie, awesome. Yeah, so this will be beginner friendly, of, of course, as well. So I'm just going to run over my paint colors that I'm using today. Um, so I had in the description um, the primary colors plus black and white. So that would be black. And white and blue. So I have, I'm using Liquitex Basics Acrylics. Um, and this is primary blue. And then I have um, Cadian Red Medium Hue. Don't worry if you don't have these like exact brands and exact colors, it's all good. You can just, um, just paint, right? Just get out there and just paint and have fun. Ooh, Vancouver Island, awesome. I was going to go there. Um, this past summer, but then it didn't work out, <laughs> but soon. Um, then I have cadmium yellow, medium hue, and then just the classic black and white. So, and as well, I am using an 11 by 14 canvas here, but any size is great or paper or rocks, anything you got. Hi, Kaylee. <laughs> okay, and then I have a paper plate, or you can use a palette of some kind of Whatever you got to put some paint on, I got water and a paper towel. So the brushes that I will be using today are, this is one of my larger brushes, it's a filbert, because um, it's a little bit rounded, so that I classify as a filbert. Then I kind of have a smaller filbert, so these are the sizes that I have so far. Again, if you don't have these exact items or sizes, it's all good. You can just, I've literally painted paintings with just one brush, so. Good day, Fredericton, Florida. Cool, cool, welcome. Hey, and I have a little flat brush. I have this random like old brush, it's pretty big. Um, just something, if you have something that's like older looking, that's just frailed and um, this could be a good way to give it some use. Um, and then I have a smaller like detailing brush and that's just another random brush. So just a variety is great, okay. So we are gonna go ahead and get started today. So I'm gonna start with putting some white on my palette. Just have some white here. I can't paint today because I'm at the hospital with my mother-in-law is going to be, yes, it'll be recorded later on to watch. So I know, yeah, it's, um, it's 12.30 Eastern time zone. So I know that's like an awkward time for some people with working, etc. Um, but I thought, you know what, I'll just go on live, see who's there, and then you can watch along at any time after. Aw, thank you. So sweet. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put some white here on my towel. Oh, exploded on me. Hopefully you're wearing clothes that um, you're okay with getting paint on, potentially, because I have already gotten paint on myself, and I haven't even started. <laughs> 
Okay, so I'm going to start with this largest brush here, my filbert brush, or you could use a flat as well. Like it can be something like this too, if you have something like that. Whatever brush you like, I'm going to dip that into water. I kind of tap it off on my cup. So today, just to give you a general idea of what I have in my mind as an image, um, is a fall painting. So because it's fall here in Ontario, that's what I've decided to do. So I'm in my mind, I have trees and water and land. So that's kind of what we're going to be making today. But like I said in the beginning, um, and if you're just tuning in now, this is going to be an open-ended mystery. So it's kind of going to come out for me as we go along. And I'll be teaching that with you guys too. So it's kind of like learning just to, to trust the process, trust what's in your mind, trust me, and trust yourself. So, <laughs> okay, so I'm going to get some white here and just um, putting that on both sides of the brush and I'm just going to start by covering the whole canvas with white and just warm up our hands and give it a nice prime so this just helps later on with somewhere the paint to sit into that's besides just the canvas I just find it helps um, to make the paint look a little more vibrant and helps to prevent like any sort of sometimes like in canvases you'll get like little holes um, so this this helps so it doesn't matter which way you paint at this point, it can be back and forth or up and down. Just try to get it on there a little bit thicker, like don't put it on too thin. Um, so I am putting it on in sections and then dipping in more paint as I go. And I, I like to go back and forth, um, but you're welcome to, like I said, to go anyway at this point. And just do the whole thing with some white. Okay, so I'm about halfway on there. I don't know if you can see it. Oh yeah, you can kind of see it. It's a little shiny. Oh, I love fall too. It's so pretty. And I like the temperatures this time of year. Like I do enjoy how it's like a little bit cooler here in Canada, in Ontario, where it's like in the morning it's cooler and then the day gets hot, like not terribly hot. And then the evening is cool again. So it's kind of nice. Kind of get the best of both worlds. <laughs> Plus pretty colors. Okay, so I'm just getting some more white out, going back and forth. Okay. So I am like you can see I am dipping and then going on here quite frequently that way it stays wet a little longer because it'll just help with blending um, how I like to paint is like they call it a wet on wet technique so the paint is a little bit wet the better because then you can actually be able to blend easier and um, I just find it's easier to blend and to move things around so hello from New York hello from Ontario <laughs> okay, so the whole thing's uh, wet and white at the moment. I'm going to be putting that brush into the water. So I'm going to take out some blue, and I'll put all the colors on my palette now that I have. So I'll put out some blue. And then as we go along, just let me know if I'm going too fast um, or if you have any questions. Um, when you do like hearts or likes, it helps me know that you're ready for the next step as well. So I'm just putting all my colors on my palette. So blue and yellow and red. And I'm going to refresh the white because probably need white eventually. And I'm going to put some black on as well. Oh my gosh, it just sprays everywhere. <laughs> okay, a little bit of black. Okay, so that's what I have there. And I have that other brush in the water and I'm just cleaning it off. And I'll dab it on my napkin so it's a little bit dry and not soaking with water. <laughs> Hope everybody's having a good day so far. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna just start with a background. So I'm going to be dipping a little bit into blue here. Okay, so I have some blue 
see that just on the tips of my brush and I'm still going to use this larger brush that I used for um, painting the white on there. So my filbert brush or a flat is great. Okay, and then I'm going to put my blue on the very top and I'm just going to go back and forth and that'll make a nice blended sky. So I'm just going softly blending across. Just like this, going from one edge over here, I have the edged canvas to the other side. Because it's still wet there um, with some white, that's awesome because as you see, it's very easily moving for me. And if for some reason it's already dried on you, just add a teeny tiny bit of water and that could help. Or you could add a little white back on the canvas. Hi, <laughs> welcome. Okay, so I'm going to get a little bit more blue here on my brush. Okay, and I'm just going to go to about the halfway point on my canvas with the blue. And then just still going back and forth and time to time just um, refreshing the paint on my brush. Make sure it's still wet down there, and if it's not, add a little bit of white because you'll end up getting some darker shades down here. And you want it to all kind of blend together. Okay, so sometimes I do go back up again. Even though I went down, sometimes I just go back up, and it just really helps to make it even more smooth. Okay, just like that. A little water can help too if it's needed. Go. So I'm up at the halfway point. Um, it's a more faded there, which is fine. Okay. Since you like the wet on wet, do you also do watercolors? Um, so yeah, I have tried watercolors before and I do like them, but my like main paint that I enjoy is acrylics. And then I have tried oils too, but I just got a little impatient with it because it just never dry. <laughs> But yeah, you can totally do this painting in any medium. Okay, so I want it to be a little lighter here if yours isn't. So because I was just moving my blue down towards this middle area, it just kind of has like this very light tone of blue here. This is um, furthest away and this is a little bit closer. So just make sure it's a little lighter here. And if it's not, just take some white and then just blend it back and forth. So you kind of want it to go from like kind of darker or just blue, more pigment of blue, um, and then down to a little bit lighter. And if you don't have that, just take some white on your brush and just add it right on there. <laughs> I'm going to be making trees today, so you probably won't really see the sky anyway, so don't worry too much. <laughs> right now, it's, I know it's all you see, so, okay. So whatever is in the sky is going to be in the water. So I am envisioning some water in my mind here. So I'm gonna get some blue again on my brush. All right, and I'm going to apply, so I'm thinking there's just like a little river somewhere around here and I'm gonna have some trees. So I'm just going to take my brush and hold it flat. So not this way, but this way. And then I'm gonna be picking somewhere in the middle and just kind of do a, like a, just a line. All right, and then I'm just going to, this still should be a little bit wet down here as well. So then as you can see, it does work easily to blend. And I'm just kind of going back and forth, making my way down just a little bit in the middle. And I'm thinking I'll go to one of the sides. So I'm gonna kind of go this way, is what I'm imagining. Okay, so I'm just kind of going across, just getting a little paint refresher and then just holding it this way. Sometimes I like to like kind of swing it. See, I'm swinging it as I go down. That usually helps get more of these like the lines to show. There we go. So I'm just going to the bottom corner here. There we go. And I'm going to make it a little larger here because this is right in front of us and up here smaller. So I will kind of even it out and just make sure that it's going from like large to small. Just gonna make it a 
little bit darker down here. So if it's not large down here, you can just pull it out a bit. I'm going to be putting land in, so don't worry if it's like all the way over here or something. It can be easily covered. Um, and then up here, I'm just going to kind of move some of the water just a little bit out in some random spots. And that also helps to blend. Um, you guys can see that. So it's just a little bit longer here and then it's a little bit smaller as you go up. Okay, so let me know how you're doing. If you need um, any additional questions or help, I can try my best. <laughs> I wish I could be there with you. I do try to imagine myself um, being there physically with you as we paint. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. All right. So I'm going to put this brush in the water. And we already have blue and yellow. So I'm going to make some green up. So I'm just putting my hair up because it's in my face. I'm just going to clean off that big brush. Okay, so if you have um, a frailed brush like this, it doesn't have to be as large, but if you just have something that kind of looks old, how it's like kind of frailed a bit there, you can find something like that. Let me know if you don't have anything like that. Um, and I'll just take out this fresh clean brush and I'm just going to mix up my color and then we'll be using this brush to um, after to make an effect. So I'm going to take some blue, put that over here, and then some yellow. So we're going to make some green up. So we start to work on the ground. So I'm just going to stir that around. So I kind of just added like a dab of green and a dab of yellow. I made it darker, but if you wanted it a little lighter, then you could add a tad more of yellow. So you can kind of just play with the color here. I'm going to go for like just a medium tone. So something along those lines. Okay, so I just have that evenly on my brush. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some land. So I'm going to have some land kind of coming over here. So I'm going to make like a little kind of hill over here that and I might as well do this side as well there we go. and anytime you get to the water just do like a little um flick kind of like that motion that I was doing here like a zigzag oops I got green and long that's cool kind of like that um as you get to the water edge just kind of pull it in towards the water so I'm just pulling in towards the water wherever I have an edge okay Hi, Candace. All right. So we're going to be filling in all of these areas here and here with this green color for some land to start. Okay, we got to have land before we have trees and anything else. <laughs> okay, so anytime around the edge, just take your time and just pull a little bit into the water. It'll just show that the color is kind of shimmering in there and Maybe some of the uh, leaves or grass has kind of grown a little bit into the water. You may need to make it more paint or you might not. Just see how far you get. I may have to make it more. <laughs> And this is just going to be an undertone. I'm going to be having um, some fall colors as well as we go along. So this, there might be like little spots showing and that's okay. I'll just put this on as a base. Okay, so I'm around this edge. So I'm just kind of flicking it into the water. You can paint your sides too um, as you go. I'm so bad at doing that. I always do it at the end. Um, if you have like thicker sides on your canvas, you can do that as you go or just do it at the end. I usually paint mine with black. Okay, 
How's everybody doing so far? Any questions? <laughs> Just making up some more green. A little bit of white under there, that's fine. I love it. Just give it different tones. Maybe your acrylic dried already, and that's okay too. Acrylics do dry fast if you're working with acrylics. Um, maybe you're not. Watercolors do dry kind of fast too, sometimes. <laughs> if you're painting outside, then your paint is definitely dried. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to the edges. Just like that. All right. So now you kind of framed your water in here. And if there was a section in your water that maybe you want it to be like smaller, then you could just move the green into that area. Hey Trish. Yes, it is. So as soon as I'm done the live, you're welcome to watch it on my page. It'll just be posted. Um, under the video section and it'll also just be posted like right on the main page too. Okay, so I just kind of touched up some of the green areas. So you can just kind of look at it and see do you need to go back up and just kind of touch up something maybe that looks a little too see-through or something. You can do that. Okay. There we go. Okay, so now we have sky and some land you're welcome so you can go ahead and clean this brush off just touch that okay so then now we'll need this frailed brush <laughs> So I'm going to use this brush and I'm not going to wet it, okay, because these, um, when you have these old frailed brushes, it actually works better when they're not wet. And that's because you'll get the textures of the brush and it's going to help us um, make like some grasses and some bushes in the background. So these, this is your friend. If you don't have something like that, you can use, um, let me find them. You can use a filbert. Um, just use it dry and you're just you're going to be dabbing. So that's what we're going to be doing So if you don't have something like this it doesn't have to be this big, but just something old You're going to be dabbing for the next step, but you can use a filbert and do the same thing Or a sponge if you had one of those lying around <laughs> Okay, so if you don't have some of that green left just make up some of it again um, Actually, no Let's do now remember, I'm making this up as I go too. I have an, an image in my mind. So I'm thinking bushes back here and then some grasses and trees. Um, so I'm thinking of having some bushes that are kind of like a lighter green because they're further away and maybe it's a little brighter here. So I like this process because I can kind of talk out loud about my thoughts and maybe it'll help you learn um, as well how I like... Um, how I paint a picture, like how I paint a scenery. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna just start with mixing up some green actually. I know I said not to, but I'm gonna need it anyway. So I'm gonna get some blue and some yellow. Just mix up somewhat of the same color green and just make sure you have some fresh yellow somewhere else on your palette. Perfect. So I mix that around so I just have some green. Um, I'll just put this brush down to the side and then I'll make sure I have some fresh yellow somewhere else away from the green, just because it's easier. Just a little bit. Okay, so I got some yellow. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use this frail brush now dry. And I'm going to start with just some yellow and I'm tapping it. So that's what we're going to be doing on the canvas too. So I'm going to make some bushes right here. This is kind of a brighter area I'm envisioning. And then over here is going to be darker. So it's further away. 
So I'm going to do some yellow tapping and we're going to start to get some fall colors in here. Okay, so I'm just kind of tapping along here and I'm just going up. You can go right on the edge as well. And then these are going to be like far, far away distance trees. Hi. Oh, England. Very cool. Yes, I've seen you on here before, so welcome back. Mm -hmm. I'm just tapping because it's nice and dry. It just, it makes cool like textured effects. So it's very bright right now, but we're going to add some other colors in there. Okay, so then I'm going to go into green now. I'm not going to worry about cleaning my brush. And I'm going to come over here and start to add some green trees so you'll be able to see this a little easier now. <laughs> I'll come a little closer. So you just want to make sure that it's not all the same size. So maybe make sure you come up a little bit in some areas. I just added a little more blue to my green and it made this um, kind of darker green, which is awesome. So I'm gonna go with it. And I'm just kind of tapping up and I'm filling in any spaces kind of more so at the bottom. Okay, so look at that. We already have far away distance trees. And we will add a little more to this part as well. So I'm gonna make green on this side and then we're gonna add a little kind of orangey tones in this part as well. Again, I'm just taking some green and just tapping. So I'm just tapping from the edge, like the line here, like the bottom, I should say, and then up. I'm just going up and down. And I'm just keeping in mind um, not to make them the same shape, same sizes. Like make sure you break it up a little bit. Just have some a little taller, or smaller, basically is good. Getting more green. It's just crazy what some tapping can do. I'm always amazed by it. <laughs> you can go a little bit into your yellow now. Just a little bit on the spots. Just so it's not all just yellow there. <laughs> We're going to have other colors like I said. It kind of looks like a sun too. Love it. <laughs> I'm going to add a little more green on it just so it's not as vibrant. There you go. I just wanted it to be a little brighter there. There we go. So I added a little bit of green on there, just kind of what was left of my brush. And then if you have any edge showing where your water is, like if there's any spots showing here, like right under this area, just kind of just move your brush across. Okay, so that's what it looks like so far. Okay, so now um, I will get out some another brush just to mix up some orange. I'm just going to grab a random brush over here <laughs> and I'm going to mix up some orange. So you're going to need yellow and red to do that. I'm just going to get up more yellow. I'm just going to take my red and just add it to my yellow. It's easier. Just a little bit of yellow or more yellow than red, I should say, sorry. So I dipped just a dab in red and then I just added it over to my yellow. It's easier to add red than to take it away. <laughs> okay. So now I got a nice orange. I'll put this brush to the side. Okay, so now this brush, I don't want it wet because once you put water on these brushes that are frilled, it literally just soaks everything on your canvas. So I'm just going to literally wipe off as much as I can on my paper towel of whatever green is left on there. It doesn't have to be perfect or anything because we're still going to be tapping on here regardless, but I'm just getting off some of the excess of it. Oh, cool. Thank you, Doug. You have to let me know how it goes later on. Yeah, this is fun. I, I love painting and I just love to share uh, my techniques with you guys and then today I'm kind of just sharing the process too because usually when I do a live I have like an example picture that I'm following and teaching so you kind of know what to expect but today I was like it's gonna be a mystery it's a mystery for you guys and mystery for me <laughs> 
Okay, so now I just have that brush that I've just wiped off and now I'm gonna tap into orange. Okay. So now I'm gonna add just a little bit of oranges, kind of just a little bit kind of on the tips. Oh, sorry, I'm probably walking. <laughs> I lean sometimes in front of the camera, my bad. So I'm just going to kind of fill in a little bit of spots just in the distance of just a little bit of oranges. See that there? I kind of had it around the yellow. Maybe I'll put it a little bit into the yellow too. So I'm just tapping very lightly. Maybe make sure you, um, you don't have a lot of paint on your brush. If you do, just um, spread it amongst the, the rest of them. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I got excited. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just wiping off some of that. See, so I'm just, you can pick wherever you like, just add a little bit of oranges kind of in between the trees, just to break it up and show that now it is the fall season. <laughs> okay, so I just wiped off the brush and just don't have a lot on it. And once, if you do have the orange and it's kind of vibrant, just go back, like wipe off the brush and just go back and just gently tap on top and it'll start to uh, fade it back in to the paint. Okay, that way it's not like, oh my gosh, it's super bright. <laughs> okay. And if you need me to repeat that, Lynn, just let me know. Kind of zoom up too so you can actually see. So it's light in there. And these are just far away. We're gonna have way more. Um, we're gonna have trees here I'm envisioning. Um, I want to do clouds, but I, I have a feeling that the leaves are just going to block the sky anyway, so we'll see if we have space after. <laughs> and then now our water. We'll put an edging later there too. Oh, so exciting. <laughs> oh, good. Good to hear. Yeah, you know what? It's all about finding like that bright technique and um, the brush, right? And yeah, sometimes you think, okay, I should wet my brush, but not all the time. <laughs> I'll give you guys a minute there to catch up. Just let me know when you're ready. There's no rush. Mm -mm. Oh, thanks. I honestly have an idea in my head and I don't know if it's going to come out, but we'll see. <laughs> Okay, so I do see hearts and thumbs up. Cool, cool. All right, so let's add some trees and then grass. Okay, yeah, I'm thinking out loud. <laughs> because the reasoning behind that is if I go ahead and do this grass, then it kind of will not work out. Like it's kind of like a waste of time because um, you'll have these trees that are now looking like they're kind of floating on the grass. So what I do, what we're going to do first is mark out where our trees are going to be and then we'll do the grass on top and that kind of grounds the tree and buries the bottom so it looks like it's sitting in the grass. <laughs> oh, um, what kind of brush was it that I used? So it's literally just some like really old paintbrush like um, I'm pretty sure I got this paintbrush from like the dollar store, like, you know, to paint like walls. Um, this was just in my basement before and I just found it and thought, okay, this could work for like bushes or trees and it does. So it's a one inch, um, it's kind of like actually if you watch Bob Ross, he uses these kind of brushes too in his videos. <laughs> but yeah, if you don't have like one particularly like that, you can just use like any other brush that just is a little bit more now. Um, or sponging works for this too. Okay, so let's make our trees. So we're gonna need some brown. So we get to learn how to make brown today. So if you still have orange, great. But if you don't, um, just get any brush here. I'm actually just gonna probably use the smaller filbert just cause it's convenient for making a tree cause you don't want something too big and we're gonna mark out some trees. So um, first to make brown, you're gonna have yellow and red to make orange. Okay, so maybe I'll just add a little more here just to, in case, okay. That's kind of more red, I'll add a little yellow to it. So making orange first in the process of making brown. Okay, so orange 
And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some blue, maybe just a little bit to start, and then I'll mix it in. So we'll see how this brown works. So right now I have kind of like a greenish tone. Oh, it's turning brown. Okay, we're good. Maybe I'll add a little yellow and a little red. You can kind of just play with it. Brown can be super finicky. Um, oh, add a little bit of black too. So brown is just muck, muck. Like if you have a child or you've watched children paint, literally, you know, they can make brown by just mixing all the colors together. So, <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. There's a question. I don't know if you plan on putting rocks anywhere, but could you tell me what brush you might use to paint those? Oh, um, yeah, I could actually just put some rocks in. That's actually a great idea. Maybe some rocks down here. So I'm thinking some trees here and then a couple little rocks. So yeah, perfect. I love it. So I'll um, be using just actually this filbert, like a smaller filbert works great for rocks or you can use a round tip. Um, let me find one. Oh, there's some. There's some many brushes. So you can use something like that for rocks too, to round tip or a, a mini filbert. But yeah, sorry, we're making brown currently. <laughs> cool. All right, so yeah, let me know if you have brown or if it was being finicky for you. Okay, so there's my brown color, basically muck. <laughs> and we're gonna make some trees. So I'm just gonna take a moment here just to plan it out a little bit. Um, so this side has more grass in mine. This is my right side and over here has a little less. So I'm thinking two small trees over here and then one big tree over here. We're going to be bold and make a big tree. <laughs> All right, let's do it. So somewhere around the bottom, kind of, I'm leaving some ground, maybe about here. I'm going to make my tree. So I'm just kind of marked it out. That's where it's going to be. All right, and we're going to go for it. We're just going to take this, make sure you have quite a bit of paint on your brush. It'll work easier to spread it. Okay, and I'm just going to start to pull it up. So I'm kind of doing this motion um, as I go up to grow the tree. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to grow it up. We're going to be going over those bushes a little bit into them. Okay, and I'm going to make that kind of go up to the over my trees. Probably gonna need a second coat on here, so don't worry if it's not quite showing up. <laughs> okay, and now I'm thinking I want like a nice tree branch to go like this. So it's kind of like a V, and I'm gonna make it come off the um, canvas. So at the end, I don't know if you've seen this, but I was flicking um, as I let go. Okay, so it's just kind of a nice curve there. And then I'm gonna get more brown. I'm going to start to make the bottom much larger to support this bigger tree. Okay, so it's always larger at the bottom. But I've just decided to make this much wider. In the bottom, you can kind of flick a little bit over here and it looks like a little root. So it kind of like curves. I'll kind of bring it closer. So I'm kind of like growing the root a little bit towards the water. And there will be grasses here later. So right now, like I said, it looks like it's floating. And if we did do the grass, then um, we'd have to kind of repeat steps. So this saves us later. And so that's what I have so far. We will put a second coat on these trees because I can tell that it will need it. I'm sure maybe yours does too. <laughs> Okay, so I have a little curve down here at the end. And then over here, can, I just kind of grew it a little bit longer on one side. Just envision them as roots. Okay. Now, I'm going to make one kind of just go straight up, actually. Yeah, there we go. And feel free, if you have the urge to make other branches going wherever you go ahead because this is kind of like a self-guide type thing as well right like if this is your art and this is your painting and all of us are going to have something unique and different to us so I love it <laughs> 
Okay, so I'm going to just stick with that for now over there, and then I'll assess it later after I have these other trees. I'll definitely be adding more branches and stuff over there. But I'm going to plan these ones out and then do branches. Uh, but if you feel like you want to go for branches now, like, you can. Like, I don't like to interrupt um, other people's flow that you might be in. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to make one that's going to be starting here and up, and then I'll make one up here and up. Um, so we'll start with the one that's closer to the bottom. So I'm leaving like maybe like an inch or a centimeter or so away, like maybe like a finger's size away from the edge. Let's make one over here. Okay, I'm still using the same brush, the filbert. And I'm just going to take my time like this going up. I'm going to make this tree grow right to the top as well. So make this a little bit wider, that way you know it's supported. So wider at the bottom and then as you get to the top, try to use like the very tip of the brush. Like there's a little edging here as you can see, I like to use the tip of it. Um, but you can also even pull out like a smaller brush. Like if I'm using a brush that's not comfortable to you, then you're welcome to just look and see what you have and um, use something smaller or even a flat brush works too for this. Sorry, I hope I'm not blocking it. <laughs> so I'm gonna grow this up off the canvas. Okay, so there's one. I'll put branches on it after. Then I make another one about here. So this one's long, like taller, and then this one's kind of up here, somewhere around water, but still leaving space. And I'm gonna grow this tree oh, looks like it's going on an angle so that's cool by me and I'm gonna make it go on a little bit of an angle you don't have to that kind of just happened for me so <laughs> I'll go with it you can make again a, like a little tiny root going towards the water it always looks kind of nice with this little roots kind of like triangles in the bottom of the tree so as you can see, it's kind of like a triangle and another one and another one, <laughs> but you're just going to do a little swoop off of the end. Okay. So that's what we have. And if you don't want this tree to be on an angle, then you don't have to as well. I'm going to make a branch to counteract that and balance it by putting one straight because look at that. You can always fix it. And I won't grow that one to the top this time. I'll make that one a little bit shorter. But if you want to the top, then you can too. Okay, so now that we have laid out our trees, I'm just going to go back over here and just kind of touch up any brown spots that maybe are a little see-through. Okay, just like by adding a couple of little bits of brown. I can tell over here is dried a bit, so I'm just going to put some brown on there. There's some brown. And if you want more trees, like say you have a bigger canvas or something, then you can. Like you could always put one here um, growing or you can have one that kind of goes across. Like there's so many possibilities. It's totally up to you. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to get out a smaller brush just to make some other branches. So I'm going to use either a flat brush, you can use a flat brush, or a round, something that's a little bit smaller and thinner. So flat works nice because I can use the edge. Oh, you probably can't see it. I can use the edge of the brush to make it thinner, or you can use the very tip, tip of this brush, of a round. Okay, so it's totally up to you. And we'll make a little bit of branches. We're going to have leaves up there too. And then we will add more branches in after the leaves just because sometimes they disappear. So I'm not going to worry too, too much about them at this point because I know leaves will make them disappear sometimes. So I'm just going to use my flat one. You can wet the brush. Okay. For these ones. And I'm just going to start by making branches literally wherever. Um, so I'm going to make one go here. And I think of them as like these. So I go like that. 
it's not an angle you can do like sometimes people um literally kind of twist the brush and it makes like these cool like kind of whoopy tree branches so when i say twist the brush i'm literally doing this as i make a branch that makes that <laughs> And I'll probably just do a straight one on there. You can just do branches that just come out straight. There's really no right or wrong with them. Use a little water if you need to. It does help spread them if they're not moving. I'll make some down here. This one has a little spot, so I'm just gonna grow it out. There we go. If there's ever like something you don't like, just you can grow it or you can cover it later with a leaf. It's all good. Oops, let's get wet. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna put that down because I'm gonna use my balance. You can go ahead to the other side too. So I just have, um, I'm just gonna make up some branches. I'm gonna try not to block the screen. Maybe I'll move my area closer. Sorry if it's wobbly there for a second. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna make a branch over here. And now I have a lot of them going straight. So now I'm gonna bend one, kind of like a curve. I don't want down like this. <laughs> and I'll make another one. Oh, this tree just loves to have straight branches apparently. <laughs> Branches can go over other branches, like you can cross paths, it's okay. So you can totally do that too. So I'm going to make one that's going to cross paths over here, just to change it up from all the straight ones that I made. <laughs> that's just what my um, brush was wanting to do. That's what I do in painting, like sometimes I, you know, you can have a general idea, but sometimes it doesn't always um, work out to be that idea and you just go with that and just trust the process. I'm just touching up like brown in the middle here now that it's kind of dried a bit. That way it stands out a little more. I'm gonna make some more over here and another one. Basically on every branch I make another branch. They can be long or small or short. <laughs> okay, so uh, maybe one more up here. Yeah, I want one to go like way over here. <laughs> I can't wait to see everybody's after because it's always just so cool to see all of our unique touches um, and how other people get ideas as they go along too. So I've decided to make this one kind of whoopy, so I'm gonna make it kind of going down. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of have a little more in the center area, but still wanting to keep some of the blue sky to reflect in the water. All right, so I'm gonna stick with that for branches for now. Like I said, we'll add leaves um, later on and we'll probably end up needing to put some branches back and that's cool. So we'll just kind of let the brown dry and what we'll do now is we'll do a little bit of edging and some grass. So while we still have brown on this um, brush that you were using, I'm using a flat. I'm going to start to put some edging into the water a little bit. So just on what I mean by edging is like, so anywhere that you see like, it doesn't have to be in every spot, just wherever there's kind of like a little swoop to the water. You're just going to add like a little bit of border under it. So I'm just like literally tapping. I'm just going to bring some edging. So you can just kind of tap across. Maybe I'll just do a little bit over here. Just to show there's like a little bit of shadow. And then you can just kind of use your finger and just kind of blend it in a bit. Imagine them as like shallow edges of rocks or 
Okay, so maybe over here I'll do one. And just kind of follow what you have as your green areas. They're very random. I know this, I'm not really saying where to put it. I'm not picking every single spot, but just here and there. And I haven't got any more br brown on my brush. I'm just kind of using what's left on my brush. And I'll bring it closer because you probably can't see it. I just have a couple of them that also look like rocks or maybe fallen logs, just to give more definition. It'll make more sense after we put um, grass into. Okay, so with this brush, I'm gonna jump back up to the trees just because it works better um, before we do grass. So I didn't clean this brown and I'm just going to use a little bit of my white. Okay, I just tapped into my white and I'm just going to give my trees just a little bit of bark and it'll work better because it's a little wet still. So just on the edge towards the center, so this side would be over here, the center over here. So I'm just going to go on the very edge of the tree and just slightly pull out some of my bark areas. And I will move closer for you. It's going to look very white, but we're going to add brown again, so don't worry. Just kind of pretending like I'm wrapping it around the tree. And I'm just moving up just a little bit on the trees. I ran out. <laughs> Some people use a palette knife for this. Since I didn't put it in the description, I won't do that, but you can literally do it with brushes too. Okay, and then wipe off the brush just on a paper towel and get some fresh brown. And just add a little bit of brown on top of the white and then just counteract that. And it doesn't um, have to be like completely brown or white, just a little bit of color here and there. Just to give it some textured looks another way you can do bark too if this way is like eh which i'm thinking i don't like it <laughs> so i'm just gonna go with it and i'm gonna move it up okay if you like it cool like you can totally keep that i'm just not feeling it so i'm just gonna move up and make it look more like it's whiter on that side yeah i like that better <laughs> totally um just going with the flow today just trying to show you guys some different things. So basically I made it light brown over here and dark over there. <laughs> I'm gonna do that to the other ones too. So a little bit of white, I'm gonna mix with my brown and save a step. And I'm just gonna go over to the other side. I'm gonna stick on the edge and this time maybe I'll just do a little bit of tapping to start, just on the edge. This bark is literally just textured and not even. Uh, can you see that? There we go. So then I'm just gonna kind of make my way up to just tapping. If you can't see the color, just add a little bit of white to it and it'll show up. I don't go like all the way up here right now just because I know there's going to be leaves there and most likely they're going to be covered. So I'm just doing the bulkier part of the trees with this lighter brown on there. And I'll go to this one too. I'm just tapping up. It's a little shiny right now, so it might be kind of hard to see. This will be much easier to do now than later when we have a bunch of uh, leaves. <laughs> so just make sure it's not just pure white. Like if it is, just add a little brown to it should be more of a light brown. 
All right. Now I'm gonna put that brush in the water. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna do grass for real. I know I've said that. <laughs> so let's give you guys a minute. Just let me know if you're ready for it. I don't wanna go too fast on you. So what we're gonna need is this frail brush again and some, a little bit of, we're gonna need green and oranges and yellows just like up here. So that's what you can get ready. I'm gonna get all of these colors back again. So I got my yellow and I still got red there and I got blue. I'm just refreshing my colors and I'm going to be making um, the, a green again. And we're going to use these same colors, but in the grass area as well. Thank you. So this brush, just make sure you wipe off any extra paint that might be on there right now on that old frailed brush. Okay, it's, it's all cleaned off. So then I'm going to be using green. So I'm just going to tap into my blue and my yellow and just tap here in the middle. And just see what kind of color I make. Yep, so I can tell it's the same one because the color underneath has dried. Um, but don't worry if it's literally exact and that's fine. It doesn't have to be. <laughs> okay, so I'm back to that tapping motion. Okay, so maybe I'll just tap on my napkin once just to get out any like bulkiness of paint and then I'll go to the canvas. So for the grass, we're going to want to kind of, we're going to try to angle some of it towards the water. So what I mean is we're going to go um, on an angle this way. So I kind of already have a little bit of an angle. So you kind of have to look at your land, like over here is more straight. So I would keep it more straight, but here, because I have a hill, um, I'm going to be angling it down just a little bit. See the hill there? So with this brush, I'm just going to start to tap along and follow those uh, same border edges that you have there. And just tap away. <laughs> so let's bring it closer just so you can see. These brushes are literally like best friends, by the way, for painting. So <laughs> I recommend you just, and it's like the cheapest investment you're gonna make too. They're just from the dollar store. <laughs> no shame in that. If it works, it works. Okay, over here I'm gonna have grass too. Can't forget. If you touch your tree a bit, that's okay. If it's wet, just kind of blend that in. Or just take, we can just put, put a little brown on there after. And I'm not gonna do every single area because I am gonna be putting some yellow and some orange in here. So I'm just starting to place, oh, I got a little yellow there anyways, because my brush had some in it. I'm just gonna start to tap and just follow wherever these are going, these little indents in the water. Hopefully that makes sense to you. <laughs> if you go a little in your water, that's totally fine. Okay, so around the tree, I'm just gonna dab in the middle portion. So there was blank, now it has some color in there. So I'm just dabbing inside of it and just going up a little bit on the tree to look like a bush has grown there. I'm just tapping all on the bottom here. It's gonna be dark over here cause there's a shadow from the tree. And like I said, if it's around your tree, just go a little bit like this with your finger or just a clean, dry brush. And just rub it in. That way it's um, looking more blended. Okay, so that's on that side. Um, while we still have some green, I'm just gonna go ahead on this side. These brushes do hold quite a bit, um, but I am gonna get some more on my brush right now. 
So anywhere there's like a little in between the tree, you can just tap in there. I'm just going to put a little bit of green over here. Just following my lines or going this way. Anytime I get it on the tree, I just kind of use my finger and blend it in. <laughs> So let me know how that's going for you so far. Um, we're gonna add some other colors in there. So I'm just gonna wipe off this brush just on the paper towel, never wetting it. <laughs> Once you wet it, it's like end game. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna need orange. Actually, let's just do just yellow right now. Okay, while the green's still a little bit wet. So I'm just tapping a little bit of my brush into this green here. Might even turn a little green-ish because of the brush and that's totally fine. Okay. So I'm gonna have some yellow kind of more towards the, the center area. So I'm just gonna have a little bit of yellow over here because it's gonna be brighter. I'm gonna tap that. A little bit on top of some of the other darker areas. So I had like the green and then I just tapped on top of it a little bit that and a little bit into it too thank you all right and then a little bit over here it's kind of brighter on the edge because it's the sun there we go beautiful sunny day it was sunny here and now it disappeared in like the real world outside <laughs> Nice thing about painting is that you can kind of just paint like where you like maybe you'd want to go or it's like relaxing. Okay, so yeah, I did go over here as you can see and I'm just kind of evened out some of the tones. It was looking kind of bold or something. We will add a little orange touch in there too. I'm just getting out this filbert brush and I've cleaned it off and wiped it off on my brush. Um, and what I'm going to do with that is just kind of in between some of these areas, I'm just going to kind of brush, kind of scraping in um, some of the color just to, it evens it out, it brings balance. So filbert or any brush just cleaned and wiped off on my paper towel so it's not soaking. And I'm just kind of scrubbing the in-between spots wherever you might have dabbed. Okay, and this will literally just soften it for you. And you're not going to be like, oh my gosh, look, this is so bold or something. Um, but if like you literally like it how it is, and that's good. I'm just doing this because I know it helps to bring balance within the painting. And that's, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm holding it. It just disappeared in my screen. So yeah, that's just the literal cleaned off dampish brush. And it just in between the spots and just helps to smooth in the land. There's so many things we can do with paint. <laughs> there. Now it's um, less bold in the spots where I put the brush down. Yes, it is available later. Okay. I have still have brown on this brush here, so I'm actually just going to touch up my brown. Mm, just like so. I have it lighter there, so I only touched up my brown on this half. Just because I know it's going to be darker over there. Okay, and that can be something you can do too. I just happened to have this brush. I didn't put it in the water, so I just had it there. But I better use it before it dries up. <laughs> So now that can be, what you can do is just touch up the brown. Ready? And then we will put a little oranges in here as well. I'll just give you a minute. While you're waiting, you can just put, you can just make some orange. I'm just wiping off the brush again, just to get out some of the excess color. This one again. 
and I'm just wiping it off. So I'm just gonna mix up some orange here. so it's not a lot <laughs> and I'm just going to be putting a little bit of oranges here and there very random imagine that they fell off the tree we're going to have orange up there too so they just floated wherever another way you can make grass too with this kind of brush is you can even pull it up and it can make like little straight grasses I personally like to tap, so it's all up to you. Sometimes people just find their their technique as they go. I'm just gonna zoom in there so you can see. And I'll just gently use my finger here and just blend them in. So they were bold, but now they're not as bold. Just blends them, that's what it does. I'm just gonna um, use this filbert brush and take my green that I have left just here on my palette and I'm just going to touch up a little bit of the water edge just maybe some of it's dried now um, and I'm just kind of if it's anywhere like a little bit see-through or something I'm just kind of touching it up a bit just get it here and there just little finishing kind of touches for this edging anyways we're still gonna put some rocks here and leaves of course so and there's gonna be leaves that fall in the water that's what's in my mind <laughs> um, with my green too I'm just gonna kind of scrub in over here just to kind of match the textured look and I'm just kind of scrubbing along the edge of this tree you can put brown on top again, like if you needed to, if it wasn't, um, if it looked like it was just a line beside the tree, because you don't want that. <laughs> so I'm just using a little bit of green just to, just to scrub in behind the trees, just because the, the brush won't fit over there for me to tap. So this is kind of my, um, by scrubbing, it shows that it's more distant and it helps to tie it together and balance it out with this portion okay i'm sure you guys are doing awesome okay do you still have brown on your on your palette if you don't you can just make up some of that there's red and blue and yellow but i made orange first so it's orange plus blue and a little black to make my brown. I just want to get out some brown just to put in a couple of kind of um, branches that are deep within these ones in these trees now that we know where our trees are. So what I mean is I'm literally just going to be very like gently time to time and just putting in like little tiny they're very light, so I don't really have a lot of um, paint on my brush. And it just shows that they're far away, um, branches that potentially are showing through. So that you can make them kind of broken up. So as you see, I didn't like just make a straight line in all of them. Like maybe I'll make a line here, move up, imagine that that's attached, but there's a gap. And then I move up a bit and then there's another gap and then I move up a bit. Can you see that? Oh no, your battery's dying. It is on replay if you don't get to a charger. Oh no, <laughs> that's the worst. Oh, you, I, I looked at mine and I was like, is mine dying? Because that would be terrible. But it's not, don't worry. Okay, so I decided you could add them wherever, but just kind of in the brighter area, it shows a little better than it will in the dark anyways. So it just helps to bring more depth. 
And up here, I'm going to use a little brown, and I'm just going to put a little bit of a border there. Just to show that this is land and this is water. Just a little bit of a nice brown border. Right up here. Could be an edging. And these are going to be rocks, by the way, after a couple of them. <laughs> kind of planned it out a little bit that way <laughs> okay so yeah a little bit of branches and edging use your brown too at this point like I don't know if you need to do another touch up in any tree portion that maybe is a little bit see-through or something just go ahead and do that if you didn't already I'm just going to do that before I start to add in leaves we're gonna do leaves um, and then we're going to have, we're going to do some rocks and leaves. And I haven't decided in what order yet, but that's what we're going to be doing for the next couple steps. We're almost there, guys. Okay. See, I'm just touching up my brown. Makes it the nicest and boldest if you do touch it up. It stands out a lot better, like, over the greenery. If it's really not showing with brown, you can use black in there a little bit too. Okay. All right, so I'm going to put that away for now. Okay, so. I'm going to start with some rocks. <laughs> All right. I'm going to use this little round brush, a little bit rounded tip here, and I'm going to make some rocks. So you just need black and white and brown out. Okay, so I'm wetting that little rounded brush. And I'm going to take some black. Maybe I'll mix it in with a little bit of the brown remaining. But it's most it's mostly black. Okay. So little rocks, rocks are flat at the bottom, more rounded or bumpy at the tops. So I'm gonna make some to start. I'm gonna use the very bottom just because I know it's already flat. And I'm gonna make a little rock. So just kind of letting my brush kind of bend a little bit to make a rock. Okay, so there's one rock. <laughs> Okay, but otherwise, if you're in the water, it's just you can do a straight line first, and then you can even just kind of tap a bit on top. Just make little, like, basically they're half circles or little triangles, um, but you don't want them to literally look like that. It just add a bump in a, a different spot, and it makes it look more realistic. <laughs> I'm going to make one up here again. Maybe one over here. I am not sure how many I'm going to make, but I'm just going to go with it. These are smaller. This is more up close, so these ones are going to be a little smaller. Um, if I'm making some up here, I could even, wherever I have a little brown there, I can put a little bit of um, black on top. And these ones are going to be even smaller because they are further away. So these ones might even look more like dots. Just not that small but just they're a lot smaller like I can even just do literally a little tap there like you can let you can use the brush to make the rocks for you like the brush already has a particular shape and all I'm doing is just tapping and then making a straight line mm -hmm. I don't want to go too rock crazy, but I'm just going to make a couple more, because why not? Okay, we'll take a step back. It's always good to take a step back and just be like, do I really need to add more rocks? Or do I need more rocks? <laughs> or do I not want rocks? Totally up to you. 
Mm, yeah. Oh yeah, mix. Perfect. Yeah. And then once we add in some white here, it'll just completely ground and sink these rocks. I'm going to make some just over here too, because why not? I'm just looking at it and I'm going to balance it out a little bit on this side. Mm. Yeah, so just flat at the bottom. Yeah, this big guy is by himself, so I'll make another one over here. Make it a little longer. And just a little one, eh, kind of biggish here. Okay, I'm going to stop with the rocks because I don't want to have too many. I'll clean off that little brush. Okay, and then I'm going to use white. White on my brush. And then just kind of tap on your napkin. You don't want a lot of white on your brush. Okay, so you want white, but then just tap it on your napkin so it's not going to be coming off in a blob. Okay. Um, and I'm going to highlight. So first, actually underneath, I'm going to do my straight line, but with white. I could put a little bit over the rock, and then now it's in the water again. And if it's a little wet, that's totally fine because it makes a shadow. Like so. Just under the rocks, I'm just using my white that has turned a little gray because of the rocks, and that's fine. I'm just putting, I'm just grounding them, and now they're floating, or they're not floating, they're in the water. <laughs> and anywhere else you have them, just imagine it as just a ripple. Okay, cool. And these ones, of course, do not leave any um, water underneath. So now I just refresh the wipe and then tap my napkin. And on top of the rocks is going to be a little highlight now. So I just kind of scrape it and I just go start on the top and I just move it down. I just scrape. Okay, so I'm literally just doing this. You see my brush? Just down a little bit. Kind of making like a little edging. We got a little spot there, so that's cool. Just move it up. And it doesn't have to be on every single top portion. You could even just tap the top of the rock, especially the small ones, because they're really far away. So they're barely like even up there doesn't matter as much because you don't see them. So there, I just tapped a little bit of white on top of the rock. So over here, you can, you can pull down or you can just tap. If you have a bigger rock, then pulling down is probably better. But if you're just having a small rock, then just um, tap the top with some white, with the white, and it will literally just step back from it and then you'll see. If you end up losing some of your black, that's pretty um, okay there because you can just add black back. It's easier to put black and then white. <laughs> okay, so there's some little rocks. Very, very cool. I'll give you guys a couple minutes there to work on your rocks. Um, and then we're gonna do our leaves and maybe a couple branches if needed back in there and that'll be it. So, Leaves are going to fall, so I am imagining some leaves like in the water. So I'm going to make like red and yellow and um, orange trees. Um, and then I'm imagining some of the leaves that are kind of in the water a little bit. And they're just going to be random, right? Because just think of leaves falling right now. They're just everywhere. So. <laughs> Oops. Oh my gosh, so sorry. Okay. Awesome. So I hope you guys are having fun so far. I'm just going to get out my yellow and red and find a spot on this palette somewhere. <laughs> you might need to get a new one <laughs> if you've run out of space. I have used my table after a while if I have run out. Okay, so I'm going to clean off this. I'm just not going to put it in the water. I'm just wiping it off. With this, this is my favorite brush, this frail brush. It does so many wonders. So you can make leaves many ways, sponges, frail brushes, you can use a filbert brush, you can use a flat brush, you can use a fan brush, 
There's so many ways. This is a fan brush, by the way. <laughs> I just have it um, in my description as just a variety of brushes, just because there's there is literally so many ways, and I could always do other videos on particular um, techniques for that. But for this one, I'm going to do this one, my frail brush. So I just wiped off that brush on my napkin and just kind of tapped it on there. So let's start with the darkest and then we can add light after. So I'm going to use just red. Okay, so I'm tapping into my red. Okay, there's a lot on my brush right now, so I'll just tap once on my napkin to get off some of the extra. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to be random and have fun here. And you will cover some of these branches, that's okay. So I'll just start at the top and I'm just going to start to tap. Okay, I'm just tapping first around the branches and then I can assess that after. Okay, so I've tapped just on the branches for now, but we, we're definitely going to be filling this in um, so you can get the hang of it. Okay, and then now there's going to be random spots where I'm just filling it in because there's going to be leaves everywhere. Mm -hmm. There we go. And I'm going to put, I'm going to go on over here. And as you see, I'm covered, like I've covered the top of this tree with just red. It's totally up to you what you leave showing. Maybe you don't have a lot of leaves on your branches. Maybe you have many. This is totally up to you. Mm -hmm. There we go. I'm just tapping along. If I have branches that are pointing down, I do move my brush down to tap. And I'm just filling in some of these areas. We're gonna have other colors in here too. So. I have a little branch there, so I'll put some there. And I'm gonna balance it out on this side. So if it looks like there's a lot of red up here or anywhere, Balance it up by countering it somewhere else in a different area. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Dollar to store and then look at what it makes. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Some people, like sometimes we think we need to have like all the best things and you know to do to start something, but you don't. You don't need that. Just back like in the early times. They would just use rocks and literal grass to paint. So, and they made awesome paintings back then. <laughs> okay, so now, because I'm just having red here, I'm going to have it fall into the water too and on the land. So this is random. So think of where kind of your bulky areas and just think of it falling. So I'm going to just tap over here and a little bit into the water. There we go very random. I'm just going to stand up and go on this side just so I don't end up blocking the screen. So I'm having a little bit in the water just because I think it looks pretty. And a little bit over here. Okay, and you can take a step back. I just step back for mine just to see like where I want to have them. In, their wa in the water, I just use my finger and I just tap it just so it kind of looks like it's in the water versus, um, I mean, they will float on it, but some of them will sink a bit. Awesome. Okay, so then what you can do now is just dip your um, brush here. Maybe if you have lots of paint on it, just tap the napkin and then just dip right into yellow. Okay, and this will automatically start to make yellows and oranges in our tree. So that's a lot of paint on my brush I just showed you, so I just tapped it on the napkin. That's the trick too with these brushes, like you just don't want a whole lot of paint on them. It's kind of like with layering. Okay, so now with this, I'm going to start to highlight some of the tops of wherever these um, leaves are. So I'm just kind of thinking of like what's in between um, a little bit on the top. So top towards the sky is what I'm talking about. <laughs> so there's my leaf area, it's towards the sky. I'm just tapping a little bit on the top. Just like so, and a little bit up here as well. 
And I'm going to put that back because I'm going to end up dropping it. <laughs> okay, and then anywhere, like, if it's really red and bulky, add a little bit of yellow cap into there. And just focus a little bit more on the tops. But you do want to distribute it in the middle of the tree, too, because it's not all just going to be on the top. So just take steps back and just take your time with it. Um, I, I might be going a little fast for you. Maybe not. I'm not sure. It's just because this brush is a little bit bigger. So I can get all the, everywhere a little bit faster. It just really depends on the size. Okay. So I'm kind of just stepping back and just seeing. I want a little bit there. Yeah. Okay. So then... As above, so below, so I'm going to put some orangey, yellowy leaves on the ground, kind of in the same areas as my other um, leaves. I just added more direct yellow up here just because it's kind of more in the centered area. Okay, so I'm just standing in the distance just to see what it looked like from a different angle. It always helps to take steps back. Okay. Okay, so maybe a little bit more here. Oh, yes. Um, in the water cleaning off a random brush. I just pulled out this one. Um, I'm just going to, underneath of the leaf, I'm just going to pull a straight line to mimic the water shimmer. So leaf and then pull across with a little bit of water on your brush. Not a lot though, because it'll um, not show up. <laughs> okay, or you can just take the leaves and just pull across straight underneath and it now buries um, not buries it, sorry, it just shows that it's like on top and it's shimmering and it's floating. <laughs> I'm just putting a little bit of random other colors just in some other areas. I'm gonna use my fingers. There you go. So then once you have leaves, and you might want to do it like maybe you want a second coat of them, like maybe if they didn't quite show up, like I might add a little bit more red, just direct red here and there, just to brighten it up again. Um, sometimes when it dries, it like it comes darker, so you just might need to do a second coat. Ooh, I can't wait to see everybody's. I'll probably put a second coat of yellow. Just cleaned off, just kind of wiped off the brush there on the paper towel. And now I'm just going to add a little more. So kind of the yellow makes some orange as well, which is great. which has turned orange in some spots. How's everybody doing? So sometimes it's very easy to go leaf crazy. So try to take a step back and just look at it and try not to go too leaf crazy. So I think I'm done with this brush now. So I'm going to put it in the water because now that I'm completed with it, I can put it in the water. <laughs> okay. And I'm just going to get out one of my smaller brushes and um, just kind of attach some branches here and there. Um, so you'll just need brown again. So I'm just literally mixing all of my colors to make brown. <laughs> like the kids have fun okay there's some brown so now 
wherever I see, like, maybe I added leaf somewhere, like, that looks like they're just floating there and there's no branch, that's when you can add your branch. So I'm just going to start by just darkening this branch because it faded. Okay, and what I'm going to do is anywhere you kind of see a gap and you can make a branch, that's where I'll make one. See how I made that right in there? It will be harder to get into the leaves right now, but you can just literally do a little tap and that will um, make the illusion kind of like how we didn't do a complete straight line in here. It's just like a little spot and then and there's leaves and then a little spot. So this is just the time to darken it and to touch it up. Okay. So anywhere that looks like it could use a branch, you could put one in. So just basically if there's some floating leaf areas, you, you know you're going to need a branch there. <laughs> always if you make a mistake just use your finger even just tap color on top <laughs> it's all good I'm going to make a branch right here as well. It's just the, br the branches start to bring it back to life. So you can put branches on top of leaves. That's okay. Just wherever you feel that you could put one or many. <laughs> like I said, we sometimes lose them. So I've started to add them back in and it just starts to bring it back to life. And you could always just do a little tap right on top. And it suddenly just gets a little lighter. of the brown again over here that's a little more black in it this time which is fine there we go that was just kind of a little accident but a happy accident as bob ross says i'm just making it a little bit darker which is cool there we go <laughs> i learned a lot from him <laughs> Oh yes, so cool. Yeah, there can be tons of leaves on the ground too. Um, these ones kind of have more of their leaves, so just a little bit of fall so far. The fresh start of fall. I love fall, but um, it also is kind of like, okay, like winter's coming. Like I'm not a huge fan of the winter season. Um, I don't know, but it's also like very pretty and it's just natural, so. Every season has its purpose, so you just embrace it. I just need a winter hobby. <laughs> I'll just paint the, the snow. Okay, so yeah, I'm just kind of just adding branches in here. Maybe you don't have as many to add or you don't want to, like, totally up to you. I just like to leave it open-ended for people. There's never any pressure with me. Like, I'm not going to ever tell you you need to do something. And, <laughs> and that's it. I'm just going to re-highlight this side of my tree with a little bit of the white and brown. Now that it's dried, it's just kind of faded. I'm just touching that up again. It's kind of the touch-up phase at this point. Oops.
how much um how do you determine oh so honestly always starting with a little is better than adding um, more but sometimes you can't control that because sometimes the paint bottle will just squirt it everywhere um so i usually know that i use a lot of white so i do put out more white um and i know like if I have a general idea in my head of like what colors I want to mostly use or when I'm painting, like say I have a reference photo and I'm like, oh, there's a lot of blue in there. So then I know I would need more blue. But otherwise, like I do also paint thickly. So that's also why it is, um, I don't always have as much waste. Um, but I do have a little bit today. So sometimes if I do have leftover paint, I will just like take a random canvas that maybe a, um, is blank and I'll just spread it on there and use it somehow. <laughs> can be abstract art. <laughs> yeah, okay, so yeah, I think I'm done. I am happy with it. And I got my branches in there. Like maybe what I would do um, if I was still like working on it um, and I would just kind of touch up maybe some of the leaves. Like and that's actually what I'm gonna quickly do. Just getting out a little bit of so sometimes I even just squeeze my bottle and then get a, a little bit right here and then I don't have to waste it. <laughs> oh gosh, that was a mistake. It fell. Yeah, sometimes you can just like go back and just touch up a bit of the, the leaves because once it dries, like it's, um, sometimes it loses its potency of the paint. So you might need to do a second coat. There you go. I made a mistake there, but I'm just spreading it out some of the paint just kind of squirted over there so it happens yeah I'm just adding a little bit of fixing it up down here and I just use my finger to blend okay <laughs> awesome two percent oh you made it good <laughs> okay well Thank you so much for joining me this Thursday afternoon. I hope you had fun. That was really cool for me too, just to literally paint something that it was a mystery. I had no idea what I was gonna make up until today at 12.30. I was like, okay, I have this idea and I'm just gonna go for it. <laughs> it's always a fun way to paint. Just let yourself, let your imagination just run free. Um, before I go, I'm just going to show you guys what I have coming up for the next class on Zoom because I would love to see you and meet some of you. So that would be fun. Um, so this is the next class on October 22nd. So it's some of the similar techniques. Um, and it looks like, so these are like some of the frail brushes um, or sponges. And then this down here is like some palette knife. Um, so we get to use some of the cool materials and I'll show you how to make this. So, um, don't be intimidated because you break it down. We start in background and then we build upon it. So this is my next class on Zoom and I will be able to meet you and then help you because I can see your art and we can talk and I can give you pointers and etc. So I'll just see you on there. <laughs> I'll just put that over there. That's inspired by a photograph that I took in Dundas um, Conservation Area um, in Ontario here. So if any of you are familiar with that, I love that place. It's so beautiful. Thank you. I love landscapes. <laughs> the world is so beautiful. All right, everyone. Well, enjoy the rest of your Thursday and have a great weekend ahead. And, and post your photos. That's what I meant to say. Post your art. I would love to see it. Post it right on my page post it in this event. Um, I would love to see it and share it with your friends. And if you feel inclined, um, please uh, share a review to my page and that helps build my page and helps me know um, what I can do to keep serving you and what I can do to improve on. I'm always open to feedback or suggestions or ideas. So thanks again. Oh, Wednesday? Uh, it's a Friday, the 22nd of October, I think. It should be. <laughs> okay, well, take care, everyone, and bye for now.